Hello and welcome to TEFAF Online. I'm Luciano Di Marciac, Head of Fair Tours New York, and today we'll be talking about one of my favorite themes in the physical fairs, women in art. And by women in art, in this case, I mean women who are artists. We have outstanding ones in this inaugural online edition. A neoclassical legend during her own lifetime and two 20th century contemporary artists. One who draws deeply from her psyche and the other who perfected the language of affective geometry. We begin with the Holy Family with the infant John the Baptist, circa 1789, by Swiss artist Angelica Kaufmann at Raphael Valls, an oil sketch on laid paper with pen and brown ink over graphite on its verso. In 1768, at 27 years of age, Kaufmann was one of only two women founding members to the British Royal Academy of Arts. She specialized in portraiture and history painting, the most prestigious genre in the neoclassical period, achieving unprecedented success for a female artist with large works such as The Sorrow of Telemachus from 1783. She produced relatively few religious themed works, which makes this holy family even more interesting. The sketch depicts baby John the Baptist holding the cross, handing an apple representing the original sin to baby Jesus, who accepts it as a symbol of his sacrifice to redeem humanity. The side V-shaped composition bathed in divine light, starts at the proper top right with Joseph's gaze, leading to Mary's muted side, Jesus's face, highlighted by the vivid locks of blonde hair, then down to the apple, John the Baptist, and finally to the lamb, another reference to Christ's sacrifice, with a basket of bread and grapes alluding to the body and blood of Christ above, completing the iconography. The brushwork is avant-garde and expressive, prefiguring Eugène de Lacroix. First, however, she transferred the drawing to the verso of the paper. One can see the dots where she did so. Renaissance works such as Raphael Sanzio's drawing of the same theme from 1506 and the later famous Holy Family Under an Apple Tree by Peter Paul Rubens from 1632 were likely references for the style and composition. It's possible that the sketch was produced in connection to a commission for an altar painting at the Cappella Colleoni in the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore in Bergamo, Italy. On the public reception of a work, she commented, the painting that I made for the gallery in Florence was received kindly. I had letters that placed me in a very good light and compared me to a serious man, none other than Michelangelo Buonarroti. Unlike Kaufman, who was already successful and celebrated at 21 years of age, Cuban-American artist Carmen Herrera had to wait a little bit longer. But the artist, now 105 years old, has thrived to experience great fame and recognition in her golden years. The exciting work Dickinson brought, Field of Combat, 1952, is from the period when Carmen was settling on her hard edge, geometric style in post-war Paris. Reminiscing about that key period in her artistic development, she said, I began a lifelong process of purification, a process of taking away what isn't essential. There's a wonderful organic quality, a real sense of the hand of the artist producing the hard shapes on the checkered green and red background that throbs and indeed turns the work into a field of geometric and chromatic battle with angular warriors propelled outward, perhaps evocative of a battle between her preceding style and her newfound abstract geometry with elements from World War II. The bottom green area resembles a ship. It's also possible to read a battle of the sexes between the pointed and concave shapes. Perhaps an allusion to the difficulties for women artists at the time. By 1959, she had arrived at Blanco y Verde, white and green series. In this case, drawing the viewer thousands of miles into the painting with only four straight lines filled in jungle green. 
perhaps derived from her Cuban memories. In 2017, she was canonized in the solo retrospective Lines of Sight at the Whitney Museum of Art. And in 2019, Herrera headlined the Metropolitan Museum's exhibit, Epic Abstraction from Pollock to Herrera in New York City, where the artist has lived and worked since 1954. Another veteran artist, Yayoi Kuzama from Japan, conveys a deep sense of spirituality in her works. With Nets Infinity, OPQR 2007 at Omar Taroche, the artist reaches the summit of the series, which began in the late 1950s. Building upon a solid, in this case, darkened background, the artist enters a trance-like state while building networks of lacy crescents that resemble clouds, coral, and above all, lichen sprouting from the flat picture plane. The exceptionally high three-dimensional quality in OPQR was built through subtle tonal variations between black and white. My nets grew beyond myself and beyond the canvases I was covering with them. I was always standing at the center of the obsession over the passionate accretion and repetition inside of me. The artist who's afflicted by hallucinations and has voluntarily lived in an institution since 1977, gets completely absorbed by the cathartic work to the point of physical exhaustion. She calls it art medicine. Another take on the infinity concept, the blockbuster Infinity Room series, immerses the viewer in light constellations infinitely magnified by mirrors on all walls. Thank you for joining us in this episode and please visit Tefaf online to explore all our masterworks only to November 4th.